There are huge amounts of cash on the line in this poker game, and we have a new player in town. There's no escaping that this is a major game unfolding in front of us. There are eight big names and eight big reputations. The big game started with a star-studded cast, including WSOP bracelet winner Jennifer Tilly, cash game player Dusty Schmidt, internet whiz kid Isaac Haxton, WSOP bracelet winner Robert Williamson III, high stakes player Viffer, outspoken online hotshot Luke Schwartz, former Irish Open champion Neil Channing, and top female pro Lawrence Grandine. It started so well for both Jennifer Tilly and Lawrence Grandine who have been winning the lion's share of the cash. Yes, yes, I'm a genius. Oh, I killed a Viffer monster. But it is Viffer who is the most aggressive player at the table. He's been involved in the majority of the hands and has been locking horns with Luke full flush Schwartz. I'm not folding, so I'm not beating anything though still. And for Luke Schwartz, he's just done about 20 grand in that pot. It's only being a bluff. Hmm? The biggest news is the new twist in this cash game, an eviction every few hours. And as the votes were counted for our first eviction, came down to Schmidt and Schwartz. I can confirm that leaving the game next is seat number two, Dusty Schmidt. With Dusty Schmidt heading off into the night, in came Justin Bonomo, and he came to relentless action. Wow, Viffer has put him to the test yeah, time time and time again. Show me the better hand. Show After me the taking better countless hand. pots off the most aggressive player around the table, Jennifer Tilly decided it was time to cash in her chips. And I just saw Viffer had reloaded. He was just waiting for that moment because he could tell when he turned. <laughs> and then he's like, give me my money back. It was left to GUKPT winner Sam Trickett to take up the challenge. His arrival was quickly followed with the exit of Lawrence Grundine. Rondine's seat was quickly filled by the larger-than-life Phil Locke. Viffer was still the man at the heart of the action. His clash with Channing failed to put the brakes on the Viffer monster. The pot rapidly climbed over 19,000 pounds with Viffer taking the hit. Throughout this game, the threat of eviction hung over the table. This one had a special twist to it. Boys, there's been a tie. Luke. Luke Schwartz survived, but Robert Williamson III didn't. In came Bodo, but there was no stopping Viffer, who continued to apply the pressure, this time to Phil Locke. Show me the book. The river, having been so cruel to Viffer, repaid him with a flush. But the biggest clash came as Luke Schwartz and Viffer went head to head, with over 45,000 pounds at stake. Aggression is the order of the day, and there's no doubting that Viffer is by far the most aggressive player around this table. Sick as a brick. Viffer's going to be, is Viffer going to be winner in this game? I think he is. Isaac Axton, loser on the evening, decided it was time to go. Bag and tag him, put him on a cold board and push him in the mausoleum. Haxton's done. An interesting mix of poker talent have gone head to head at our table. This is the biggest cash game in London and they're all vying for bundles of cash. The movement on the board makes for pleasant reading if you're Bodo. He doubles up with a big hand against Locke. He was feeling the pressure, now he's well and truly in the black. Pressure still being felt by Schwartz. But of course there is one seat still empty at this table, but not for long. We now welcome a new player at the table. It's Dan Fleischman. Dan Fleischman is the CEO of poker. He's won the CEO poker challenge and has followed that up with wins in the chip leader challenge and on the Canadian tour. I see guys like Isaac Haxton and Justin Bonomo and the Unabomber and there's just such different characters that are here today. And the dynamics are, you just have to take everything into effect. So I'm really going to be looking out for certain players and trying to really get involved with some of the other players that are willing to do some crazier things. Hello, sir. But he's buying in for 15,000 pounds, Dan Fleischman, and he seems to be quite welcome in this game. It looks like the players think he's a big change from uh, Isaac Haxton. And uh, I'm joined now by Eddie Hearn in the box. Eddie, what do you know about Dan? Um, probably uh, just a little bit more than you, Jesse. I met him tonight. He's uh, CEO of Victory Poker. Oh, this uh, new site. Yeah. yeah. So um, 
Thank Obviously, you. no <laughs> mug. <laughs> no maybe I'll tell you more in a couple of months. Time. <laughs> I think there's this ego yeah, thing with Bonomo it. going on where... I you know, he, he, he thinks he thinks like, Channing is a horrible ball. player. Fair, and it's like the longer this nice goes game. on, you, you wonder if he can outlast Channing or not. Right. You so might think right. Channing's a horrible player, but right. he's up in the game. He seems to always be up in the game. He's always such a favorite in these games. It's where he lives. There's three players in the pot here. Viffer and two firing at him, as usual. Check. That's just made his hand pretty pretty. And against Viffer's king queen with a flush draw, the two over cards could get action. Bet 500. Wow. It all depends how Viffa decides to play this here. Cool. Wow, then that's, that's slowed it down a little. Okay, yeah, I mean, the, question, this, the problem is with this hand, Jesse, there's not many hands. When, when Trickett's hand improves on the turn, it's going to slow the action down generally. You know, a six. An ace. Well, I mean, Trickett must be thinking right now, you know, you, you cannot really check and call right now with his hand, right? Because there's three spades mm. on board. So does he try and stick another bluff in here? I think so. And then I, I think maybe Viffa let's just lets him ha hang himself here. And hope that he catches up on the river. And if he does catch up on the river, Sam's still going to be worried about the flush, but he's probably going to go in check call mode. You know, and if <laughs> problem is, if his flush comes now, and obviously he doesn't want it to be a spade, you know, it's easy for us to say Viffa should just call it, but... He's in position. You know, it's a straightening card. If, if Trickett's made a big hand, he's thinking about wanting to get on here. Okay, cool. Nice. Well, if Sam makes his hand here, he's... Yeah, he's, 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 wor he's worried about the flush, but he's, he's certainly checked calling, and that saved him anyway. He's, he's, he's done with this. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, unless well, Viffer's actually know. got the, the flush, can he call a go. big river bet? Tr Trickett's about to this do a lot of money This could be bad news for, for Sam Trickett. He's got 8,175 in front of him. He started the game with 10,000. He's probably going to have to fire around two and a half thousand here at least. He's going big. Viffer stringing him up like a horse. <laughs> this is. <laughs> He's gone big, hasn't he? He's gone really big. What is it, 3,400? And. He's got a lot of heart, Sam Trickett, doesn't he, Eddie? Just bad, just bad timing. Okay. Biff has played the ham really well, you know. To raise, okay. and, and now Sam's in. Sam's under 5,000. He is now buried. And for Viffer, I believe... Was that the pot that got him in? Exactly. Can I get another 10? Far enough. Who do I ask for another 10? Who do I ask for the chip? Uh, more to come after the break. Welcome back. Eddie Hearn and I watching the big game. Sam Trickett's having a rough start, Eddie, at the hands of Viffer. I spoke to Sam before the game. He was telling me that he's not been running good lately. And when this, you know, your timing's a little bit off. You seem to be making the plays at the wrong time. And he'll be feeling pretty sick now. And Viffa just 6,300 pounds down. Meanwhile, Sam Trickett decides to add some chips. 10,000 pounds more to his stack. 100. You know, Eddie, 
this is the game. Yeah, like and TV Luke's Bobby stuck about 35,000, and if Feldman manages yeah, well, to bust him, I can't be responsible. That's all I'm saying. Of course, they take yourself out. I wonder who's. Can you uh, imagine if Feldman busts? If, <laughs> if they all know that Feldman's coming in, they, they, they have to take out the seat to Luke's right or left just to get the whole thing going. We've got um, Feldman's yeah, in next, and then we're going to go with uh, James Mitchell. Um, just recently won the uh, Irish Open. I think he's going to give a lot of action, actually. I uh, had the opportunity to watch him play very recently at that Irish Open final table. I can guarantee you he will give action. Where are they? He is not going to sit around. I haven't seen Snoopy. He's in that case. Well, Jen was doing the first session. I think probably Snoopy's doing it now. Bob yeah, I think I this. Snoopy. We're talking about Snoopy and Jen. I read on the first break. The UK's I mean, famous like the and most popular hours. poker bloggers. Oh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, all obviously the players also involved with Neil's site, blackbeltpoker.com. Queen. Everybody keeps Three. Me. King. The players have been making use of. <laughs> it's a beautiful flop for Bodo. See, Luke's just. Nine. Nine hundred. Wow. Nine hundred. <coughs> he does this a lot, but it's just in the category of spunking off your chips. You know, when it comes around to Bodo here and he's seen someone lead out and a call, and he's sitting there with two pair, he has to be thinking, well, I'm sure I'm good, but I really don't want to be seeing a turn here. Yeah. Raise up and that's why he's raised it up. Total. And that's why he's made it so big. Yeah, there were too, too, too many turns which... Kind exactly. of made his hand a little dangerous, didn't yeah. it? Anything. Well, as you can see, a jack oh. just stinks. An ace. Luke's just thinking, what? No. Why? Every time I, I lead out or I have a hand. Jeez, he's not convincing himself that he can win this with a re-raise, is he, Eddie? You know, one thing I've seen from Luke is he's erratic, but his timing is good. And I think... No. Well, you, you remember that he made that... 25 more. He's made because it. I give you 100 change, babes, yeah? Luke's going to steam 25. here. 25. Him and Bodo got locked up in a massive pot in the World Open. They seem to know each other's games quite well. Well, Bodo shoving you. It's about 6,200 pounds. Ten. Both Luke and Bodo are about 15 grand back. Whoa. And that's the kind of card where if you're Schwartz, you almost have to make a play now, right? The flush draw here? He's got the flush draw. A pair of flush draw. He probably doesn't like to see an ace, but it's a great reason for him to carry on. That's 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 the key here. Seven thousand four hundred. If Luke calls here, he's got seven thousand behind, and he's pretty much taking the play up. away from Luke. That's the key here. One of the problems he might be facing, Eddie, is that he's saying to himself, "If I don't hit this, am I out of the game?" I mean, I think if Bodo checks there, Luke, Luke. Makes makes a big bet. I think he's actually going to call. Mm. You know the way he's been running, Jesse. I I just think if he calls and it, it just comes a brick, it's just going to be it's, it's not going to be pretty. It's kind of like he's between a rock and a hard place. He wants to fold because he doesn't feel like putting all his money in drawing. Yet he thinks he's getting the price. And he's. Hard to ignore math in this game. Do you have any questions? <laughs> well. That Bodo sticking the needle oh. in. <laughs> it's a maths problem. And Bodo's pretty convinced he's ahead right oh, now. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be honest, Bodo probably doesn't want to see a river. He'd rather take it down now. Yeah. Passed it. Love to see that river card. That's true, cool. Jack Tan. Did you just say King Jack of Clubs? Yeah, that's what. It's a maths problem. King Jack of Clubs. Ace three of Clubs. 
<laughs> he just can't help but tell him the hand. <laughs> And I guess that Hamboto is quite happy to take it down. Well, they been <laughs> negotiating and finally come to terms on the seven deuce game. Any player now winning a pot with seven two in their hand gets 500 pounds from everyone at the table. Hundred. It's gonna mean action. Time, time. I apologize. Straight off the bat, Justin Bonomo picks up the seven deuce. You just have to play it aggressively. Right now, for him, that pot is not 500. Listen, Justin's a maths man. Yeah. So all of a sudden, he's thinking 500 extra in the pot here. And this is going to change the game dynamics so dramatically. You just see the introductions like this just bring some crazy action. Well. There's there's 900 pounds in the pot right now in Justin Bonomo's mind. There's 4,300. Three players. Actually, being a math major, he's probably got it a little closer to about 4475. Two, four, four. Wow. Oh, wow. Fifth has flopped the set. And, and Bonomo. 900. Is, he is. 900. He has got to try hard here. Biff is just cool in here. You know, Biff would do that against so many players. But raise up to three thousand. This, this is all about the, yeah. This is all about the the level on level thing, right? You know what I mean? No. <laughs> well, it's like it's like he knows that Bonomo would be expecting him to just call with the three fours, so he's raised with him. One point one seven. Hmm. Well, he's just gotten him to call like he's three thousand. seven thousand pounds already, Jesse. Nine. <laughs> if you check here, you're basically you're giving up the pot. Fifth has like got a Tom Dwan thing going on. Yeah, his mouth. Look. Four thousand. All of a sudden, Bonomo's thinking. Didn't at the beginning of this hand, <laughs> I just tell the table that <laughs> just to confirm the do seven game. <laughs> He's thinking. Justin's now thinking. He hasn't got do seven, has he? <laughs> Bonomo is now kind of realizing that maybe this money for the do seven doesn't matter nearly as much oh. as the fact that he's oh. he's buried in this pot. And it's, this is part of that Bonomo theory. If you can beat a bluff, you must call Viffer. He's calling him. He's calling him on the river. He's just going to stack him off. Viffer can bet the load right now. 9,000. He's calling. No. Yes. <laughs> this is what Justin Bonomo said, Eddie. He said, Viffer bluffs so often that if you can beat a bluff, you must call. He can beat a bluff. You have seven deuce? Oh, this is a big this is a big bet right now. Justin's now Justin's now thinking, why did I call on the turn? Oh. <laughs> what the hell am I doing right here? He's gone from just confirming to the table the seven deuce rules at the start of the this hand. Sick. I don't know what you're putting me on. To be involved in a twenty five thousand dollar pot. That's if he folds. And Eddie, I mean, even because, even though he's gotten this far, the seven deuce and all, with against anybody else but Viffer, the hand would not have reached this stage. There, there is, this is just the Viffer factor, isn't it? No? You think he can pass here? How will he feel if he calls off and has just done... 15,000 pounds. I think he might call. Oh, he's calling. Oh, he's 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 so calling. 
<laughs> he is so calling. He is so calling. He's looked at this pot, and he's adding 4,000 pounds in it, and he's getting himself his old 3 to 1. Oh, my God. This is going to be ugly. Ugh. Oh, Lord Almighty. Eddie, he's good for another 24 hours. This man, this man is good for 24 hours more. Welcome to the game, Justin Bonomo. Chips. And Chips. <laughs> he was leaving a minute ago. <laughs> wow, this is... This, this game is just taking a new twist, hasn't it? We can see this seven deuce game is going to make for some crazy pots. Viffer now ahead 11 grand. Justin Bonomo's got to buy 10,000 pounds more. He's got a multitude of problems. I think sometimes you kind of want the table to be afraid of you. You want them to know that you're the best player at the table. I think in this case, I might want to downplay it a little bit and maybe seem like I'm playing bad, seem like I'm on tilt. Hopefully that way they won't vote me off. That eviction never far away from the players' minds. More action from the big game after the break. Welcome back to Les Ambassadors Casino in the heart of London's West End. Eight players around this table, a whole host waiting for their chance in the big game. Joining me in commentaries, Easy money. Eddie Hearn. I'm starting to see some tired faces out there. Simon Muntz in the background there. I think second at the WPT in Bucharest recently, waiting to get in the game. I told him he'd be in 12 hours ago. He has another eight hours to go. Call. The, uh, the lineup is really backing up and... Wow, what do you think is going to happen when eviction time comes? Who's, who's, who are you going to boot from this game? Wow, well, I mean, I would have said Justin, but after that, oh, that okay. hand there, no one's going to want him to leave. Four, the game. Team, now. Channing, maybe Channing, Channing's had a few votes so far. Check, check. I think he's promised them 500 bucks each in their black belt poker account if they <laughs> don't vote him. 625, Seven. sorry, 700. Tell you, right, right now, Locke is looking like a bit of a terror, isn't he? He's getting ready to get rid of some. No, no, no. Oh. I just have to find out who's getting Call. Pretty standard for Bonomo to, to check call here. What's going to happen on the turn? Probably a three, a six, a eight, or a half. Three. There you go. Check. Gives Phil an excuse to carry on. Justin's now thinking. Whoa. And he can't he can't be liking his hand right now. I agree with you, Eddie. Call. And I mean, Bonimo's gotta have a lot of confidence because he called three barrels against yeah. Viffer. Is he prepared to call three barrels against Locke? Check. Well he is now. Yeah, he sure is. Ah, oh, that's a beautiful check. You don't have ace queen of diamonds, I don't think. That's a great check, wasn't it? It's almost like a check that Phil like went to grab his chips, then thought about it, and then oh, okay. he doesn't like it. I'm just going to hope that my hand is good. I'm just going to check for value. Know. You got seven. <laughs> <laughs> no good. Your seven plays. <laughs> so does your five. <laughs> I love, I love the way he... And he won't show... Oh, yeah. so sick. It's so yeah. sick. <laughs> oh. He's going to... Let's, let's see if he tries to pull a hedge into the river. Travel on seat four. Maybe I'm supposed to. <laughs> I get, like... How are you supposed to get these people out of the game? I mean... Sure. We've got... EPT winners, well, Irish okay, Open winners, bracelet like winners, all trying to get into the game. Folded. And later, he went all in on me and I called and it turns out those, that $100 wrap thing of 5K was uh, 199 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, hate, you hate when that happens. He had wrapped all Lock uh, talking mm -hmm. about wrapped, being yeah. angle shot. Cool. And meanwhile, he's picked up the two kings. Cool. And Eddie, this is... This is one of the really fun things that happens 
uh, you know, now, where the game is now, if you pick up a massive hand like two kings or two aces, you can so much feel like you're going to get on by someone who picks up the seven deuce. It makes things dangerous. Oh. Oh. Bodo's down that flush draw. <laughs> Justin Bonomo has a piece Tre. of it. Phil Lack's got the Tre. over pair. Tre. I think Tre. we could be stacking off it, depending on how it's played on the floor. Well, I mean, Lack, Lack will be hating life right now because <laughs> once you've limped in and it's gone six ways with the Kings, you're, you're almost not even sure if you should just fold up right now. And he's just, mm. he's just mm. check called here. I think he did that for the reason that you said, Jesse, just that he's hating life. Yeah, because... And, he, you know, he doesn't want to make a big pot. He thinks he's probably good right now, but just in case, let's play small pot poker here. Feels like there's 10 foot just more volatility. We raise up to 2,000. Wow. wow. <laughs> that's, 2000. A, that's a crazy little play, isn't it? Well, that's just just made things really interesting. Odo's not folding, obviously. And, and nor's Phil. So Justin in a minute is going to think, why did I do that? The thing is, if Bodo raises here, what's Phil going to do? I mean, Justin's raise is, is so strong. It looks like a massive hand. Wow. I think I have to fold. Yeah, wow. I bet you're really good at those. I think he does too. Five. Wow. And... <laughs> Two players left in. <laughs> you gotta think the heart's coming because Bodo's hitting everything that moves. There you go. Felt it. Absolutely felt it. <laughs> Justin's just Most getting crushed right now. Well, my life online. Didn't care about the tickets. Was doing it. That, that, that so Queen of Hearts kind of hit every draw. It hit the ten jack. It hit the hearts. Phil Lack's gonna love yeah. life in a minute. So yeah. I, and he, he's he's made. What was this I made nearly a full pot bet. I um I wonder exactly what Bonomo's putting Bodo on right now. Oh, Bodo, he must call. Re-raise. Uh, the for Justin. Uh, in the pot. 13,000 total. And it was a, it's a really sort of weird hand. I mean, y you could either say that Bonomo's made a really advanced bluff here, or he's just tilted off like a monkey. <laughs> he's not feeling good, no, I'll tell you that really much. He was, he was leaving the game a minute ago, and now he's <laughs> thinking, do you know what, I might never leave this game. <laughs> <laughs> that big exhalation, which is going to immediately be followed by a rebuy. Yeah. I give him, I give him 11 seconds Eight. to rebuy. <laughs> hey guys, new dealer. Thank you very much. And uh, Bodo stack him up. He is destroying this table. 22,000 pounds ahead already. He's only been in the game for an hour. Viffer's now winner. Everybody else stuck, and the bottom has fallen out of Bonomo. I'm uh, pleased to be joined now by the latest so big champion in UK one? poker, the Irish Open champion, James Mitchell. You, uh, you had to play a couple of long sessions uh, during the four days of the Irish Open, James, but w what do you think about these this 48-hour straight thing? Um, I think this is kind of going to be endurance poker, especially getting through to the last few days. There will be people that are stuck looking, trying to get out of it. I think it will just like, be a great dynamic in the game. They're playing the 2550, the 100 live, and it looks like... Has Bodo raised this one as well, up to 450? He, he's a man on a rush right now, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, especially, it's like quite a tough lineup. He's coming in and just like playing his game and uh, it's working out for him. So. There are three ways to this flop. And he, he just seems like a guy locked into the zone. He's basically got the worst hand right now, Bodo, but just figure so many ways to win. Oh, hello. 
Yeah, here, Neil's flopped the nut flush draw, and uh, Fleshman's got middle pair and a gut shot. Was, was Neil just check calling there? I wonder. What's his plan for the turn here? Um, oh, well, well, it's a nice turn to have. Nine hundred. Yeah, I assume he's just going to bet. Hope to get value from some some kings, some good jacks, maybe some like queen high flush draws, king high flush draws. And as far as Fleischman's concerned, is is his hand a mirage here, or is that just because we can see the cards? You know. I mean, it was it's a r relatively good flop for you for those hands, but the turn card is a pretty bad one. Nine hundred. Race. He's wow. making a cool. Oh, he's making two, a race. Two, eight. 2,800. In wow. Interesting raise. 900. And is, is that the kind of raise where he's actually he's raising a little bit small to try and uh, and get a cheap showdown? Is that the idea, or is is, is it a bluff? Is it? I think it's just a bluff. Um, I'm pretty sure he doesn't expect Neil to uh, to call it worse, so he's probably just trying to take it down. Right, Neil can never call a force in your mind here. Dry ace or something, no. There's just not that many dry ace of clubs he can have or anything like that, are there? Yeah. I mean, what can he have? I mean, a lot of this, like maybe Neil would be calling with like king of clubs, the top pair, second up flush or things like that. I mean, he probably would call with ace of clubs. Queen of spades, ace of clubs, queen of spades. How about that? Yeah, he probably would. Yeah, I think he'd make the call with those kind of hands. But most of the hands that will be calling him here uh, are beating the Queen Jack. <laughs> so, yeah, like I was saying, it's, it's, it's a bluff. And Channing is taking this time right now to try and figure out if the best play overall... Oh, well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Which could have been the best play overall. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially when... Uh, Fleshman's uh, check raising could easily have a worse flush, and uh, he, Chan Channing shove could represent the bear race of clubs. But as it happens, he's getting he's getting oh, second best. That would have been a good seven deuce. Yeah, short seven. And Neil Channing hasn't exactly nice. taken a lot of pots tonight, but he's won a couple of big ones, and probably pretty happy to only be stuck 3,000. Defeat. Yeah, he's been playing since the start, and I think he had a relatively bad start, so yeah. I guess he's getting back on track. Uh, how do you think Justin... <coughs> I mean, Bonomo is the kind of guy, he knows what it's like to be stuck. This is not a lot of money to him. It's not going to bother him, but yet... Do you think there's this sort of internet ego thing at stake for him right now? Yeah, especially where, when in the internet players like play the live the live games because it's so yeah. slow, and uh, you know they don't it's like they, he might not have the experience Four of playing these li live cash games Five. where if he is stuck a lot of money, it might be hard to get out of it just because you don't get too many hands in. And, and also, I mean, I, I, you know, you, you know a lot of these young UK players, you guys, I mean, you look at guys like Channing and Locke and you say, random old guys, can't play. <laughs> it's true, they both have kind of, both have strange styles of play. Um, Call 500? I want to win 6700. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like 700. Channing's got 500 yes. middle set. Lock calling with a flush draw. Channing seems to have everyone drawing dead on the turn. And the hands I've watched. <laughs> How can he be stuck money if this yeah. is the way he plays? <laughs> yeah. 1200. Oh gosh, really? And what, 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 what if, if Locke does decide to raise here, what's the thought process? I mean, do you, do you like it overall, in a sense? Um, yeah, Locke can definitely represent a 10 here, and there were a lot of draws on the flop, so, like, multiple straight draws, flush draw, flush draw, look cheaper for me? Channing could easily be paying that card. And it's... With worse. But obviously, he's got Locke drawing dead, like the hand before. Right. And... Channing right now, if he thinks Locke does 
have a 10. Um, is it, was it a better idea to raise, or is it like Locke's going to have to lead into him with a 10 or without a 10? So may as well um, may as well get that money in on the river. Um, well, this way it gives the lock more of a chance to bluff if he's bluffing to bluff of a stack, and he probably won't fold a 10 on the river anyway. And what once um, plus locks out of the six thousand seven hundred. And that's a bet that's designed to get called by three tens, I'm guessing. What do all the other bets add up to at this point? All the bets one profit. 30, 36 plus 700, 4,300 to me. Like, Locke that's kind of knew as soon as Channing called that turn that he was in horrible shape, right? Channing may yeah. as well have turned his cards over, he said. I feel like you're beating me. It's so sick. How can you be beating me? <laughs> what do you have? I must have a good hand. A I wouldn't have bet if I didn't. That's true. I think that was just looking for a bit of TV time there. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's <laughs> playing so good. Ace high flush try, you miss it, huh? No, I had a hand. Pair of deuces. No, oh, I had a good hand. What do you have? Channing and Lack set to clash again in the big game for more to come after the break. Welcome back to London for the party poker big game, Bodo Sprezny, the man on the up in this cash game, but the most remarkable feature is the rise of Viffer. From the very depths of despair, he's pushed and pounded his way back into the black to the tune of over 11,000 pounds. Luke Schwartz, the player at the other end of the table, reeling with a deficit of nearly 35K. Viffer has basically destroyed everyone at this table, except for Neil, who's now beat him in a massive pot, and then maybe beat him in this pot, which hurt a little more. It doesn't need to be the biggest pot to put you on tilt. It's, right. just, it's just that, you know, when someone else gets the better of you. Come on, Phil. <laughs> you didn't have to encourage me. One of these days, I'm going to get some of my money back from you. <laughs> no, I just lost 4,000 of you. Yeah, you had 7,600 of mine. Yeah, I got it put in the bank already. Yeah, but I need that money. I'm uh, you know, unemployed. Channing is a guy no one wants to get owned by. And look, he's got ace king in this yes. pot. When do you think Bodo's going to start snapping it and making it 2,200 more? This pot's little, six you know, one. Do that. He's already he's winning enough money. What does he get? Right. He's in for 5K, isn't he? Well, no, he's in for 15. Oh, okay. 15. It's still not like, it's still quite good being Bodo. We expect Vifford will bet with a nut flush draw after raising pre-flop. Okay. What's going to happen sure from here? Pretty sure 305 ways in. Um, going to be popping it to 2600 soon. <laughs> it's really a question of what Fleischman does, right? Yeah. I'm all in. You fold it. Uh, I guess you fold it. <laughs> I'm all in. I, I, <laughs> all in. Oh. Talk about pulling the trigger. Oh, I heard someone say all in. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said all in with about like eight people still yeah. act. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's got a tough, pretty tough decision here. Did he? Did no, he, no. Did Dan, he Dan announced all oh. in about about. I, uh, yeah, while something. while the action was still over on Channing, oh, Dan I thought, announced I thought all you were in. Saying Viff is the one that sh shoved all in until I ever won. Get Queen Jack of Hearts. Pretty standard. I mean, there's just no call here for Viffer, is there? I mean, I think you can find a call here because um, Fleshman could have like King High Flush. Plus your like six eight of hearts or hands that he actually crushes. Right. So, and what is he against? What Fleischman has a queen or I mean even two pair. He's like two to one, right? Yeah. <laughs> like in this specific example with Fleischman with the king of hearts blocker, like he's still forty three percent. So. Just nine thousand seven hundred. Yeah. That's only nine. Even with like this overbet, it's almost he's got the price to call out already. If he's got the twelve outs twice. Yeah. He's worried that maybe he's against a set. I don't know. Is he? It's still fairly marginal, isn't it? Nine thousand to win thirteen. It yeah, it is. I mean, <laughs> like a cool here is like definitely. If you push, like sometimes you got to push your edges, and like if he thinks that it's a profitable call, even if it only makes him a couple hundred dollars every time he does it. 
<laughs> and actually, like Dan Shovel in can look like a fast draw all the time or like combo draw. <laughs> Right, and if, There's it, not if that it's many a combo queens. draw, he's got him crushed. There's not that many queens that I think he would just be happy to get his money in with. So, and maybe he wouldn't play a set so strongly. Or maybe he would. I, I haven't really played with Dan before. I'd be free-rolling with king-queen hearts. Huh? I'd be free-rolling if I had king-queen hearts. You're going to show me the king? <laughs> I can't. I would show you, but I can't. Yeah, there was something about oh, no. the... Um, the way he went all in with four people still lacked in front of him, that th doesn't make it seem like the strongest hand of all time. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but I can't is really in a tough winner. spot here. <laughs> but he's made the call. I don't know. I, I guess it, the, the math will hold up, but I feel like it was a pretty loose call. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I mean, it probably helps with her to make the call because he's, you know, winning a lot of the game. You can run it twice if you want, I don't care. Either one. I just feel like gambling. I know it's a bad call. <coughs> Viffer knows the I guess Viffer knows the math. The ace is good as well. So you're running it twice, right? Yeah. Well, it looks like they're gonna run this twice. But with the fair Ready? result. Nah, there's no fair results out there. Uh yeah. running once? Twice, twice. yeah. I feel like yeah. when you when you got Dan's hand, you run it twice. You're unlucky. Like if you, oh, or well, Viffer's won the first one straight away. Right, and now Viffer is hoping for okay. uh, it's a bad river. <laughs> 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 yeah. You have to you have Sorry. to really know how to funk if you're running it twice, huh? Oh, wow. Ouch! Ouch! He won it twice. That hurt Dan. Oh my gosh, that hurt him. Yeah. I can't rebuy until the bank's open, so. Do you want to play? Whatever you want, you can get that. I just 10's fine. Yeah. Eddie, you want to give it to him? That's can I get 10 more? I'm going to loan it to Dan, so just give it to him. Let me show you about 8, 9 of all. So yeah. Well, Dan Fleischman's buying another 10,000 pounds, and, you know, he's probably, you know, it feels like he had a bit of a haircut there. I mean, uh, it was uh, it was a hard way to go, especially when they're running so twice, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's pretty sick beat. Really do. My two is a pretty good hand. Phil and I just six. traded a hand that we played earlier, and he tried to say that his hand was nine play? deuce. <laughs> but it was suited. You don't play nine deuce unsuited. And only it was suited. a raised pot. Pass. I'm starting to think Why I don't, don't believe it. Phil was actually telling the truth about that. He yeah. did have a nine two suited. But he is so the boy who cried wolf, okay. isn't he? 450 is the bet. Uh, everything suited. Bonomo play does is wrong. Uh, he's just got that rhythm thing going on. D d d should Re Channing be be re-raising if, if, if four people this pot's four, four ways, or is calling ever going to be profitable here? I think this is a perfect spot to re-raise. Okay. Like he's got, like, got some money in the pot. Yeah, it's panned out nicely for him. Mm -hmm. But in in a sense, it shops his hand a little bit. But, but you just it does. But it's going to be pretty tough for. Uh, People to call 2600 more, or is it, oh, 2150 more. Channing's only got a 31k stack. Is uh, I, mean, I think Viffa might be making the call here, set mine. And but I think Justin Bonomo with a 15,000 stack is going to struggle to make the call, but maybe he's tilting a little bit. Cool. I, I wonder if if he start if he has this idea that Channing's got the seven deuce in his range, or is that the kind of thing that when you're losing a little bit preys on you more than it should? I mean, yeah, like I think when you got the queen ten suited and you and you're, uh, you know, you're stuck fifteen thousand in the game. Maybe you start putting the guy on ace king <laughs> or seven deuce. Yeah. <laughs> And Viffer's in a different spot. All of a sudden, he's now winning 20,000 pounds in the game. He's actually considering folding the pocket eights. God, he would have he would have bit your arm off to call 2,500 pounds here about five hours ago. Close. He's laid it down. Justin, you have, I can't see the reflection. Is that two of those? Or yeah, I got two of the five. Okay. Yeah, no, that's what two I wanted. Two players. I couldn't see what two and I wonder what Channing is putting Bonomo on here. Ace King, perhaps? I mean, he's playing on Ace King. It's a pretty bad flop for him to hit. It's like Bonomo's got about thirteen thousand pounds back. There's six in this pot. I think. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to say, if Neil bets around the 3,000 mark, it leaves Bonomo with a perfect stack for shoving. So it's a great bet by Neil to induce this all in by Justin. We'll see if he falls for it. And Bonomo all of a sudden, I mean, this is obviously the problem about getting in this a pot like this, right? You don't mull in. Yeah. And he has taken right. the bait. Well, he'll be drawn right, live, but he's no, not I'll happy. Okay. okay. What do you got, anyway? I got seven deuce. I mean, I got king. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm lying. I don't actually have seven deuce. I have a ten. I just want to make yeah, the table sweat oh, a little bit. <laughs> Did you hear that call? He actually, a uh, yeah. oh, man, stuck. Some stuck nice back gallows, to me. Yeah. <laughs> you like seeing a guy with? Yeah, it is. It is. That's that's quite. Uh, <laughs> That's quite oh, classy. Really I've, uh... That's a... That's a great card for Neil. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah. And I think they're just running it. Seven dudes. <laughs> 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 yeah, he shouldn't... He so shouldn't... Have, you think can I have it? He shouldn't yeah. have sweated him too. Okay, early. I'm gonna call it a night. I'll be back tomorrow, guys. Oh, oh, Neil's really wow. turned things around, then, uh... And I'm winning about 20,000 in the game now. Sure. Yeah. And Justin Bonomo, this, that is discipline. That's character, just shaking it off. Say, I'll get a few hours sleep and see you guys yeah. later. Yeah. 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 He's not worried. Yeah, yeah, cool. Down 30,000 pounds. It doesn't even take a hair off him. It's okay. He, no, it's fine. He plays these numbers every day of his life. There's been a lot of crazy stuff happening today. First, Viffer started off just making it like 9,000 every hand. He tamed up a little bit, but more crazy stuff just kept happening. It's really tough to sum it up. The big game, not even near halfway over. Jennifer Tilly's taken home the biggest paycheck, over 30,000 pounds. Williamson took some money and run. Viffer, Bodo, Channing still at the table. And the worst performances, Schwartz and Bonomo Berry. Bonomo's head is spinning. Bunch of others still trying to get even. With fresh faces joining our lineup, the action is guaranteed to get more exciting as more money is stacked up. Join us next time as time ticks on here at the big game. Feldman about to enter the fray. This is a man who has a clear strategy for this cash game that should see the cream rise to the top. Skill always prevails in the long run and uh, tournaments. There's only that one uh, hand which can knock you out and there's no coming back. But in cash game, if you get unlucky, you can simply reload and the better players always come out with the profit in the long run. Feldman about to clash with the likes of Schwartz, Viffer, Channing and Locke in the big game four.